Hey everybody, today I'm talking about my top 10 simultaneous selection games. Now I really like simultaneous selection games because I think it reduces downtime, it has natural tension as you're trying to get into the mind of your opponent, and they're trying to do the same, and you're trying to just counteract each other and get, uh, get the best of them. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with simultaneous selection, I think the best way to describe it is something like paper, rock, scissors, um, where you're both doing things at exactly the same time and trying to um, get one up on your opponent, as I said, and um, try and read their mind and um, benefit. So uh, let's get started at number 10 and I'll uh, talk through some great games. So at number 10 I have Flamme Rouge. Now Flamme Rouge is a, um, it's a cycling game based or a racing game based on the, um, on the uh, Tour de France. So you are basically taking the role of two different um, cyclists and um, you are trying to uh, win the race. So um, this game has some very cool, elegant mechanisms in it, and one of them is the simultaneous card play. So what everyone's going to do is they're going to have a, a hand of cards or a deck of cards, and everyone's got exactly the same, um, same cards. And everybody's going to flip and choose a card at the same time, and um, that's going to decide how far they move along the track. But the, the important thing about this is that the track is so narrow that only two cyclists can get on, or, or depending on the expansion, you can maybe up to three or even one, um, can get, be in a certain spot at once. So you have to predict about, you know, is that spot going to be free when I get there? Um, is my opponent going to move faster than me in order to squeeze in there first? Um, it also has this very cool kind of a slipstreaming mechanic where you can get away with playing lower cards as long as there's only one gap between you and the racer in front of you, you can actually just get a free bit of movement in order to catch up with them. Very thematic. Um, there's a great tension about, as I said, getting knocked out of these spaces because if you both share the same spot, then you're going to waste movement and get pushed back and back in the queue. Um, so yeah, you've got to think about what other players are going to play, try and just get as much mileage as you can out of those cards. And um, just, yeah, just be as efficient as you can with as little as you can. And uh, yeah, that, that tension of getting knocked out of the spots is really there. It can be very frustrating, but it can also be very rewarding if you uh, get away with it. So that's my number 10, Flamme Rouge. Uh, and number nine, I have Raptor. Now, Raptor is quite an unusual game. Um, it's an abstract style game where, again, both players, well, it's a strictly two-player game, and both players... Um, have a deck of cards. Now one player is representing a family of dinosaurs where you've got the mother dinosaur and um, a bunch of little baby dinosaurs and then the other team is scientists. And um, you're going to play these cards numbered from 1 to 9 at the same time and whoever plays the higher card gets to take the action on that card um, which can be very important, give you powerful kind of special abilities but the person who plays the lower card gets to take action points um, depending on the difference between the two and you can use those action points in either to kind of move around the board or pick up the dinosaurs if you're, if you're the scientist and try and get them off the board because you're trying to do, I don't know, experiments on them and stuff but if you're the dinosaur you can use those action points in order to um, you know, in order to uh, basically eat the scientists. So uh, yeah, it's got a very cool thematic game, for, especially for an abstract, and the tension is there based on the cards. You don't want to give your opponent too many action points, but you still want to use your most powerful abilities. So yeah, there's that like good kind of tension between the two, and um, you've got to get into the mind of your opponent. So a, a nice game, that is Raptor. At number eight, I have Xi'an. Now Xi'an is a, um, it's an area control kind of Euro style game. Um, not, not too much hype about this one, but I do really like it. But it what I like about the simultaneous part of the game is that um, you basically draw four cards and you choose to put these cards in pairs. And um, at the same time, you and your opponent are gonna reveal those two cards. And um, the cool thing about it is that the, the cards not only represent the ability you take on the turn, but they also represents the initiative you take on the turn. And initiative is so important in this game because you want to get into the actions that you want to do first. Otherwise, your, your opponent can get locked out of those um, spots or they can have to pay you to get into those spots. And just that, that tension of um, who's going to go first and when is very important. And that's why I think this game um, gets onto this top 10 because that, that simultaneous action tension is just, it just does shine through quite nicely. So that's Xi'an, my, uh, my number eight. At number seven, I have Not Alone. Now, Not Alone um, is a one versus all style game where one person controls this um, kind of alien being and everyone else are these different um, like marine type characters. Um, and basically, you are trying to, or, or the, the good guys, or not the aliens, are working together to try and um, get off the planet, um, and the alien is trying to catch them before, before they do. So what you do in this game is that every, all these kind of marine players are going to try and choose a card in their hand, and that decides what location they're going to go to. But the alien 
is trying to, to um, kind of think where the Marines are going to go. So they're kind of trying to, um, you know, put a token on where they think the... Um, where they think they're going to go to and they're going to catch uh, maybe two or three people at the same time. But the cool thing about this is that all the different uh, Marines don't know where they're going to go or don't know where each other are going to go. So they're trying to get into each other's head, maybe try and spread out as much as they can. Sometimes you'll find they all go to the same place at the same time where the alien is, so they'll get caught all at the same time. But it has a great tension to it and um, it just works really well. So that's uh, Not Alone. At number six, I have 5211. Uh, now this is a very simple card game where you are trying to get as much kind of points as you can from those cards um, and the mechanisms are very simple because you have, have a hand of five cards and then you play two cards simultaneously, play one card simultaneously and then play another card simultaneously. And um, basically you're trying to um, get the most cards of a certain colour um, in front of you in order for those points to score. But as I said, you, because the cards are getting played simultaneously you don't know what's going to be the majority at all times because uh, you know, some people just might all of a sudden just catch up with you straight away. Um, but you can also have this really cool mechanism where you can kind of force other, other colours to get bust because if you go over a certain limit of colours, that colour won't score. And also if you tie on colours, then the next colour or the next colour down will score. So you can use that kind of simultaneous play to not only work in your favour, but in, all, in order to really shoot other players kind of points down. Um, and just thinking about what other players are going to do is clever because you might think, oh, I've got... I've got five cards here, I can get away with another one and I'll score loads of points. But then you don't know what everyone else is going to do because they might also play a card and make you bust. So you've got to think, you know, am I just going to play it safe as I am? Am I going to push my luck and go a bit further? Um, and stuff like that. So, and because it's all happening at the same time, you've got to really do plan uh, or think about what other players are going to do and not be too greedy. So that simultaneous kind of action works really well with 5 2 one, one. At number four, I have. Libertalia. Now Libertalia is probably one of the most interactive um, games in terms of the simultaneous play. It's basically the, the key mechanism of this game is the uh, simultaneous action selection. So everyone's going to have an identical set of cards um, based on these different pirates on this crew and um, they're not only numbered from, um, oh, forgive me I don't know the numbers, I think they go quite high, but they've also got um, abilities on them. So everybody's going to play, uh, choose a card at the same time and play them and um, then they're going to activate on the ship in a certain order all their abilities. So they could be maybe knock out the person in front of the queue or they could be steal money off someone else or take X amount of money. But then the cool thing is, is that after all the abilities have been resolved, then the person who's the highest number still in the ship gets to take loot um, at first choice. So yeah, there's, there's this kind of two different mechanisms where not only do you want the power on the card, but you also want the number on the card as well in order to get the best loot. And just the synergies between the cards are so, so clever. Um, by, you know, by pay people playing certain cards and you playing a different type of card, um, you know, lots of cool things can happen and um, just throw people off, off kind of track on what they want to do just based on the card that you played. So yeah, very interesting um, you know, simultaneous play in this one. Um, the only thing that stops it from being right at the top of the list is there's a bit of take that in the game that I don't quite like. But um, other than that, it's a fantastic game. That is uh, Libertalia. Um, at number four, I have a very simple game with six nymphed. Now this is definitely the um, the lightest game on this list, um, but it's probably um, you know the easiest to get to the table. It's the quickest, and um, again that simultaneous play is the key mechanism on there, and um, is what the game's all about. It plays lightning quick, only takes about ten minutes to play. Um, if you play one round, that is. Um, basically, you have a hand of ten cards, um, numbered from either I think it goes from one all the way up to. Um, I think it's like 105 or something. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to play a card simultaneously with everyone else. And they're going to get, when you reveal them in chronological order, they're going to be put on these one of four different rows of cards. Um, and basically you're trying to squeeze in between um, the difference between a card and your card. And they'll go in numerical order. But as soon as the seventh card of a row goes down, then you'll take all the existing cards on that row as a negative points because each card has a bull's head on them. And those bull's heads are what you don't want because they count as your negative points at the end of the game. Um, so you've got to really think about what other players are going to play. 
Um, know when to bite the bullet and take a row by playing a lower card, or can you get away with just squeezing in somewhere, but someone might just squeeze in before you, meaning, meaning that you have to take the whole row. It's an extremely fun game, and um, definitely one of the best filler games I've played. Um, I'd recommend this one to anybody at all because it's such good fun. The strategy is light um, and very simple, but again, constantly engaging and just laugh out loud moments with six nymphed. At number three, I have for sale. Now, uh, for sale is another filler game. Uh, this is uh, one that I rate extremely highly. Um, I've played this game to death. Um, probably my most played game of all time. Um, it's a game where you are buying properties first, first uh, in an auction phase, and then the second half of the phase, you're trying to sell those properties um, for the most profit possible. And that is where the simultaneous play comes in, because once you've got your kind of portfolio of properties in your hand, um, based on these cards, um, a number of cash checks are put down on the on the table um, in uh, in numerical order for, for from most expensive to the cheapest and everybody is going to choose a, um, a property from their hand and those are numbered from 1 to 30 and um, reveal them at the same time and then whoever's played the highest card gets to take the highest check and whoever played the lowest card or the second highest takes the second highest check and so on. Um, but there's some real contention in there because of the, the huge gaps in between the paychecks. So you might really think that, you know, I'll play my 25 and really go for that bigger check, get that 15,000, but the next check down is only 8,000. So, um, you know, if someone pays that 26, then they'll get the biggest check and I'll jump all the way down to an 8,000. So instead of doing that, do I choose to play a lower check in order to just get the, the third prize and um, just, you know, get a, get a reasonable profit in return? So the tension is extremely, um, extremely fun and palpable in this one. Um, there's a great amount of player interaction as players just jump in just before you, meaning that you get shafted and get uh, a rubbish return on your best properties. Uh, just tremendous fun and um, extremely light family fun game. Um, again, that I'd recommend to anybody because it's so accessible. That's for sale. At number two, I have uh, probably the biggest, most sprawling game on this list with Rising Sun. Now, uh, the simultaneous play in this game is much different to all the other games I've mentioned in this one because this is uh, quite a, I say a small part, but it's a, it's a fraction of what the game consists of. It's basically the combat mechanism because in this game, uh, in order to resolve a combat, because this is an area control game uh, based in feudal Japan, but the combat system is, is simultaneous. So you have a screen and behind that screen you have like an action board uh, made up of different actions. And simultaneously, you and whoever's fighting over this region is going to bid their coins that they've accumulated throughout the game on these different action spaces. And whoever's bid the most on these action spaces will get to take that ability. And they're resolved in, um, in a kind of an order, and the order is extremely um, important. And because they're done at the same time, you really do have to think about what your opponent is going to bid on so that you can kind of trump them. Um, so basically what will happen is, first off, that the... You know, whoever's bid the most on kind of sacrificing themselves will, will kill themselves and they'll get victory points for each kind of troop they've killed because it's supposed to be honourable in order to do so. Um, so and, and if someone's bid alternatively after that, then they kind of wasted all their money because they're not fighting anything. So yeah, it's this really cool, cool mechanism where and the tension is extremely, um, you know, it's really raw because not only do you have to focus on this fight, but you have to focus on the fights that are going on after it. So again, getting into the head of your opponent is so, so important in this one. And um, just thinking logically about what they're gonna do. And um, sometimes they might do the complete opposite. But I think for a combat system, I think it's so innovative and different. And it just um, adds a whole new dimension into, um, into a game like this. So yeah, Rising Sun is my uh, number two. And finally, at number one, I have Tifa Tashin. Uh, now, Tifa Tashin is uh, an awesome simultaneous selection game. It's a very social negotiation style game where everybody takes the role of corrupt politicians. Um, they have a hand of identical cards, or every player does. And you are going to play the, one of these cards every round um, in order to decide what action you're going to take. Um, so the, get, the premise of the game is that there's going to be a president and they're going to divvy up a certain amount of cash cards amongst all the different players, however they see fit. So they can give all the money to themselves if they wanted, they can give it all to another player or spread it evenly. And then once they've kind of settled on what they want to do, everyone is going to play one of these cards at the same time. You can bluff and lie to each other about what you're going to do. So these different actions are such as um, vote to keep the president in power, um, vote to kick the president out of power. Um, you can choose to... 
Um, skim money off the treasury, which is important because if you're the first in player order to do so, then you get more money. Um, you can choose to kind of bribe other players and uh, you can choose to blackmail people as well, which is so important because you can put your little um, private detective in front of people and kind of threaten them. And then they probably think in your action turn, they're gonna, you're gonna play the um, blackmail action. But again, if they play uh, the counter blackmail action, then they counter blackmail you. So it really is a kind of a, a multi, multi-dimensional game of, um, of paper, rock, scissors. And the, the kind of the bluffing and the interaction and negotiation is so great in, in relation to its simultaneous selection because you can really pull the wool over players' eyes. Um, you can try and lobby for their support and just try um, just try be as corrupt as you can. And it's just so much fun and um, definitely the best simultaneous action selection game that I own. Um, this version here is not readily available anymore, um, but it has been reprinted in a different theme um, called Good Critters. So I would highly recommend it and pick it up if you can, because it is an absolute gem of a game um, that I'd recommend to anybody. And um, just constantly engaging and the player interaction is fantastic. So that concludes uh, my top 10 simultaneous selection games. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, again, I love this mechanism and I'm always willing to try a game that includes uh, simultaneous selection in. So if you have enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.